I think everything works. So welcome to another digital classroom live stream. It's always exciting, these live streams, you know, because you never know what's going to happen. It's all live. So when something goes wrong, it really goes wrong. But today, let's hope that nothing will go wrong. So today we have a special episode. Normally, of course, we're using the big strobes, so the Hensel systems. Today, we're gonna use speed lights, the smaller strobes. And we have some really cool news for you guys. So stay tuned for another episode of Digital Classroom. Are you guys ready? There we go. Okay guys, so welcome. And we have guys over from Marhese, that's very far away. But Michiel, you are actually losing today because we also have Thomas on board from North Carolina. And I think that's pretty far away. And Michigan, hello Michigan, Emma Lord speaking, 15 points. Now that, that's more the Eurovision Song Festival, we don't do that. Okay, hey, today, um, speed lights. Now, what is a speed light? The first thing you have to realize is that a speed light is just a light source. It's nothing more. It's the same as a normal strobe. It just is a little bit smaller, a lot smaller. It runs on batteries and, well, the modifiers are a little bit different, but it still emits light. And that's the one thing that I want to stress before we start with this. Speed lights are just strobes. Don't be uh, scared to use them because, well, there's a lot of options. Just use them. Now there are some things that I want to address before we do the photo shoot. And that's actually how I use my speed lights. Now normally with speed lights you of course have the option to use it on ETTL, metering through the lens. This is something that I will not use today and I will hardly use anywhere. But for the very simple reason, metering through the lens, it works, but it's the same as on your normal camera. It works great in normal environments when you're outside, like a landscape or a cityscape, that works fine. But as soon as you go to a little bit more extreme settings, for example, a snow landscape or, for example, a cityscape at night, you will find out that your camera will probably overexpose or underexpose. Now, that's not a real problem when you're shooting, for example, outside, because you can always adjust this in Lightroom and it's not that much. But when we're shooting with strobes, you have to realize that the model gets all the attention from the strobe and everything else is probably, in my style at least, very, very dark. So that means that it will overexpose that area on the face a lot. Now you can use spot metering, but then you have to get the spot. You know where I'm going, right? So I would highly, and that's also what we're going to do today, highly recommend you guys shooting on manual. But first, let me tell you a little bit of a story. Grandpa Frank tells a story, right? Nah, it's not really like that. We're going to do it really fast. Many years ago, when I started with small flares, the main problem I experienced was modifiers. On my Hensel strobes, I have a lot of great modifiers. I have softboxes, deep octas, reflectors, fresnels, what not more, ring flash. And when you look at your speed lights, they are already pretty powerful by themselves by using the zoom function, for example, and by using the swivel head, but that's about it. So what I got was a lot of softboxes, bounce cards, and nothing really worked for me. They worked, but that's, ab that's about it. I wanted something that was really creative. And that's where I found out about a company called Rogue Expo Imaging. I think this is about 12 years ago. And one of the things that they delivered was actually a flash bender. I might wonder, Frank, what's a flash bender? Flash bender for me, it defies nature. Because normally you can't bend light, right? It's not possible unless you're in a science fiction movie. But the flash bender does something that's very similar. Now we as photographers, we want to mold the light to our needs, right? If we want a spot on something, we mold the light to get into that spot. If we want a model to be lit from the side and no light hitting from the back, we aim our light at our model and we block off the sides. If we want no light scattered on the front, we use barn doors, we block off, and there we go, we always block off light, right? We focus light, we block off light, we focus and we block. And this is where the flash bender comes in. And I think it's absolutely genius. So this is the flash bender. Now this is the Frank Dorov flash bender. And how do you know it's a Frank Dorov flash bender? Because it has a soft silver inlay. The other ones are white and these are soft silver. Now what makes the flash bender so special that I totally fell in love with it? And that's actually this. You can literally bend it any way you want. So in essence, you can create nice stuff on the backdrop, but you can also and this is something that a lot of people don't even realize when they buy the flash bender, you already have a snoot. So let me just fold it nicely. 
there we go. And uh, it's not the most perfect snoot that was ever created in mankind, but hey, you know what I mean, right? You have the snoot and you can even mold the light with this by punching it in or out. So it's a very, very powerful device. But also because on the sides we have all this Velcro means that we can add, add attachments. Now my favorite attachment, that's the strip light without, with a grid, without any doubt. But you also have soft boxes. Now the soft boxes I don't really use on the Expo Imaging Rogues, but you know, the strip light I do. And I want to show you how it looks. So in your bag you have one flash bender and you have one strip light. And the strip light folds up really, really small and compact. It's almost like a magic trick, right? Whoop, and now it disappears. So what you do is very simple. You use the Velcro pieces and you very simply just Velcro it together. Let me just do that on camera very quickly. Now this is not a demo video, of course, it's just a live stream, but you know what I mean, right? You just fold it. Make sure that you use the Velcro on the inside, not on the outside. At least that's how I do it. And then of course, because there's a lot of light leakage on top, you simply just fold this over. I hope you can see it on camera. And there you go. So now we have a strip light with a grid. Yes. So that's pretty amazing, right? And now we have the flash bender again. But I'm going to show you a setup in a moment with the flash bender. And we have a great new backdrop by Click Pro Backdrop. So let me show you very quickly the set for today. You're going to find it so cool. That's the wrong camera, Frank. That's the right camera. So look at that. Don't you just love those backdrops? Amazing. Okay, so, but there was more. So over the years, we've grown very accustomed to Eric and John from Expo Imaging, and they become really good friends of us. And this is why I'm so happy to announce to you guys that today we are not only introducing to you guys for the first time the magnetic system. It's been on the market for a few weeks now, and this is the first time I'm going to work with it. I did test it a little bit, but I wanted to make sure that you guys get the first experience. So I tested it out if it worked, and this is the way that I work. I like the tension, right? So I tested it out if it worked, and I didn't shoot any images with it yet. Today, it's going to be the first time I'm going to use it, so my responses is going to be 100% authentic. If I don't like it, I'm going to say it. If I do like it, I'm also going to say it, but I already know I'm going to like it. And why? It's because how the system looks. Watch this. Watch this. So this is actually the system that I'm using. So the system is designed to be used on all the round strokes. So Westcott, um, uh, Profoto, the A-Series, and well, Godox, and there's another brand and I just forgot the name about it. And the cool thing is if you don't have a round flash, because I don't have a round flash, I'm using the Nissan strokes, you can get an adapter and that's actually in this kit. So this is a complete kit, adapter with everything else. But what is everything else and what makes this so special that Frank is so enthusiastic about it? Well, let me show you. The first thing is of course the adapter for your strobe. Now, I'm using rectangular strobe, so normal speed lights, and this is the adapter. So it's soft plastic. And it has two ears, like a kid. So when a kid does something that you don't want, you just pull his ears. And just, no, just kidding. <laughs> don't slap it. You just pull the ears and you put it over your strobe. You let go and it fits. Now they're available in two sizes. We have medium and nor no, we have normal, standard, standard and small. small. Sorry, standard and small. <laughs> this is the standard and it fits on almost all my strobes. If you have a strobe that's a little bit smaller, for example, I think the Nissin, which I have here, which one is this? This is the i60i. I think for this one, no, even standard will fit. Look at that. Wow. So if you have something that's really small, guys, sorry, then use the small one. Otherwise, just use the standard. Okay, but what is this? This is actually a magnetic ring, and that's where the whole magic is. Now, I know you, you probably go like, Frank, there's already a magnetic system on the market. Yes, and that's why it's time for a new one. Because, well, you don't want to lose your magnets, right? And they actually found a great solution for this, if I can find it. Because you can't lose the magnets, but you can lose the whole system, because it's so <laughs> small. Here we go. already have it again. This is everything connected to each other. Let me just show you very quickly what goes on, because this is important before we start the whole live shoot. So, the first things first. They're very tight. This is a grid. As you can see, the magnets are positioned slightly different from the other systems. It can't fall out. Whatever you do, it can't fall out. 
so you can't put it in wrong. So you're always secure. Magnetic ring, and on Profotos, of course, you can use a Profoto adapter. On Godox, they already have a magnetic ring. The only thing you have to do is click. Make sure it fits nicely. Okay. Now, if you want to take it off, this ah, will take a lot of strength. So don't do it like that. If you want to take it off easy, do it like that. This is so ingenious, guys, because this is the main problem with strokes. If you use it in the field, you don't want it to fall off. And this, I'm a strong guy, but now I got it. Put it on, and watch this, with two fingers, plop, and you just take it off. So don't try to push, pull it off, just click it off. Okay, so you have your gel, uh, sorry, you have your uh, grid. Of course, you also want the gel, right? No problem at all. You need a holder like this, and you put it on here. Click. Sounds great, right? And then you get a boatload of gels, like way too many gels, like an overkill of gels. If you want to use every color in one shoot, you probably end up shooting for a year because all these colors are really great. And just look at the names. Uh. Actually, there are two color packs. One is a correction color and yeah, the other is called portrait. Correct. There's one correction co uh, kit and one portrait kit. So this is the more creative kit. So think about Berry purple pie. I'm getting hungry. Lollipop magenta. Hot pink, cotton candy pink, candy apple red, revolution red, cosmopolitan. I just love it when your <laughs> names are like that, I really do. But there are so many different colors and the colors are very, very vibrant. And that's something that's important. That's what a lot of people forget. When you look at colors, we always have three coordinates, the X, the Y, and the big Y. U, saturation, luminance. If you lower the luminance in a color, the saturation becomes more intense. So when you use gels, you can use thin gels. They don't take away a lot of light, but they also aren't that saturated. When you use thicker gels, thicker gels, yes, that's a, that's a tongue breaker for us. If you use thicker gels, <laughs> it will give you more saturation. Sounds logical, right? But a lot of people don't realize this. So when you put your gels on and you want that really, really nice blue or red or purple hue in there that really is intense, make sure you take the thickest gels available. Okay, but that's not all. This is the blue gel. Uh, where is it again? It's so small. So you just lay it on top. It can't go wrong. Lay it on top, and now you take the dome, and you're done. Frank, what if I don't want the dome? Yeah, then I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. The dome, of course, just hold your finger here. Don't hold your finger there. And you just take the dome off, as you can see here. Okay, let's put the gel back. And now you have a system without a dome. If you want to dome on again, very simple, just lay it over. And of course, live, it's always a little bit more tricky. But even live, you see me doing it pretty easily. It's, and there you have the dome. Okay, so let's take a look at what we can do with this system. Because this is how I wanted to introduce you guys this. This is the magnetic system from Rogue Expo Imaging. And it's available in stores now. And the thing is, why we tell you guys this as news, you probably know that we've taken on a lot of new products. So we have IQ Wire, the next generation tether cabling with the inline boosters and 10 meters without any extension cords. We have the beautiful backdrops from Click Pro Backdrops, Triflexion, and we can also announce now officially that we are the Dutch distributor for Rogue Expo Imaging. That means that all the products from Rogue will be available via our web store, but also available in the stores in the Netherlands where you can find our other products like IQ Wire and Click Pro Backdrops. We are still looking for stores, but we're probably going to do that ourselves. But IQ Wire you can get in several stores and you can also find the Rogue products. So go to your local store in the Netherlands and ask for the Rogue products and don't take any other product as they try to sell you this. This is the one you want. Okay, let me see what we can do further. Um, okay, I wanted to show you where you can find the info. So when you go to our shop, you can buy the products there. Uh, for the Netherlands, if you're abroad, you can just go to the Rogue Expo Imaging website, of course. And that's also very interesting. I think if you want to know all our products, just go for our Dutch website. So just go for our Studio FD NL, and then you can, can get all the products. And this is also where in Dutch everything is explained. Now, if that is too hard for you guys, and you want to know anything about IQ Wire, just going to give you all the links at once. It saves me a lot of time later. So go to iqwire.nl. That's for the tether cables. I'm going to use that tether cable too. And by the way, today I'm shooting to the iPad Pro, believe it or not. 
yeah, I, I take a lot of risks today, but if I survive this, that will be great. And of course, click pro backdrops. We also have our own website in the Netherlands and we still have to register something for Rogue. Um, because this is all pretty new for us that we take up the distribu distrib distribution, distribution for Rogue. Okay, um, the thing is, and that's very important to understand. In photography, you have several train of thoughts. And the first train of thought is that photography should always be natural. I agree and I don't. For news photography, yes. There's also this train of thought that goes like, hey, photography is like a soap opera. If you aim your camera the right way, it looks amazing. If you aim the camera the other way, it doesn't. So we can build sets and we can create our own uh, reality. And that's what we're going to do today. So the backdrops from ClickPro backdrops are my choice for the very simple reason they act like real life situations. Now you might want to like Frank, real life situations. Yeah, look at this one for example. Uh, let me switch over very quickly. Now, as you can see here, there's no light on it yet. But normally with backdrops, as soon as you put light on it, they will start behaving differently. For example, you get glare or you get the reflection from your strobes. The click pro backdrops, backdrops, <laughs> that's a mouthful, I'm getting better at it, they actually don't glare. So that means that you can use pretty extreme setups and still get the same response that you would get from a normal wall outside. Of course, the structure is slightly different, maybe a lot different, but in essence, it just looks absolutely amazing. So we're going to do that today. So backdrops are very important, but also the lighting you use. I want to be able to control the lighting. So that means that I don't want umbrellas. I really want something that's focused. So we're going to start out with the first setup with our model Nadine against our graffiti backdrop. And we're just using the Expo Imaging Rogue Flash Bender with the grid attachment and of course the strip light. What else, right? So Anouik, will you take over for me? Of course. I will quickly put it on picture in picture. So there we go. Yeah, so right. you can switch over the cameras. And if I'm correct, we have Nadine coming in and I hope Chewie won't destroy her beautiful outfit. Let me first grab the light meter for now. There we go. Okay, so first things first. And this is something that's important all the time. Hello Nadine, how are you? The first thing you always have to do is, of course, meter the light. Now, why should I meter the light if I'm using speed lights? I can use ETTL, right? No, we just talked about it. ETTL, it will mess up most of your shots when you do high contrast shots. You don't use ETTL. So I'm using manual. Okay, so how does that work with strobes like speed lights? Exactly the same as strobes from your normal setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to power on the strobe. And I'm using a uh, Nissin here and with lithium ion battery, so that's a pretty cool one. It runs a long time on a battery. Power on this. And I'm on manual mode, mode A. And that means that I can now just meter the same way as I use my normal strokes. There we go. That close, I'm getting at huh, a shutter speed of 127,800. That's pretty cool. But I'm only getting 2.0. So that's not enough. So I'm going to go to ISO 200 for 2.8. Now 2.8 is not something that I want to do. So let's open it up. Let's go for let's go for 5.6. Okay. Meter the light. That's 8.03. So let's go down one click. That's F8, and let's go down one more. Okay, meter again. Perfect, 5.63. So let's go down just one click more. There we go. Okay. Okay, let's put on the remote control. Okay, 5.6 ISO 100. So let's go to ISO 100 on the camera. And then 5.6, of course, 125th of a second to kill the ambient light. Let's just take one shot very quickly, just to see what we got. Now, as you can see, I've aimed it straight at my backdrop. And this is something that I wanted to show you before we're going to aim the light correctly. 
As you can see that the backdrop doesn't glare. It does reflect, of course, because we have white letters, but it doesn't glare. Do you see that it responds exactly the same as one of those building doors you expect, like next to a live stream or uh, a live concert or whatever? This is exactly how a door reacts, and that's what I love. I don't see my strobes, but I do see that nice reflection back from those letters. Okay, let's aim the light a little bit better now. So we're going to aim it straight at our model. Perfect. And let's see what we can do. Really like this. Nice, Nadine. Chin down just a little bit. Nice. Okay, so now we're building a little bit like at night. She's at night, she's standing there. But as you look at this, you see that there's also a lot of stuff that you don't see, right? And she has this beautiful clothing. So what should we do? Let me just think about this for a second. I need to open up those shadows, right? But when it's at night, wouldn't it be cool to open up those shadows, not by normal light, but by using a color? Because with normal light, we can always open up, right? Let's use a color. Let's use blue, for example. And as you guys already know, I have a blue gel. So let me just grab that one very quickly. There we go. And let me find my strobe. Okay. Now, I don't want to aim it straight at my model because I don't think that's the right way to do this. What I want to do is I want to aim it actually straight up. I'm using the dome and I'm using a grid. Now the grid I don't want to use now, so I'm going to take the grid off. Isn't that just awesome? Great. So let's just turn this one on. Now this is my channel B. So what I'm going to do for channel B is I'm going to start out on full power. Because this is a little bit like cooking. Turn B on. Uh, let's go for full power. Great. Okay, let's do it again. And this will be way too much, of course. Or maybe not. Oh, I actually like it. Now, why don't you see any double shadows, you might wonder? Well, that's the trick. First things first, the dome will make it very diffuse. So it's, of course, it's not a bigger light source. That, that's ridiculous. It's still a small light source, but look at the size. It's a round dome. And it actually means that it doesn't give the light one direction, it actually makes the light diffuse. Or, as you might say, it actually makes the light omnidirectional. And that's the kicker. If this would be flat, the light would still only go one way. And that means that it's focused light and it's a small light source. By using a dome like this and with this material, what you're actually doing is you are making that light omnidirectional. So it goes this way, but it also goes from the side. And that means that I can do this trick now. And this is the God honest truth. I've never tried this before. Anna Week is here. Anna Week, did I try this before? No. I actually was very nervous for the broadcast because I didn't try it. The reason I didn't try it is very simple. If you look at the design, you already know what's going to happen. And that's what made me so enthusiastic about this. Let's say you want a little bit more blue. The only thing you do is lift it up, set it a little bit closer, and don't aim it towards the ceiling, just aim it somewhere. Again, it's omnidirectional. And there you go. So now we have a little bit more. Would it be cool if I aimed it straight at our model? Why not try it? But at this time, you have to realize that now, because we're on full power, we have to pull down on that power. So go for channel B. Go for one-fourth. Let's try it again. Oops. Activate channel B. There we go. Just a little bit more blue. And as you can still see, no double shadow. So don't you just love the system that works like that? Now that glare on the backdrop. Do you see that it responds exactly like a normal door? We've shot many of these shots outside next to a discotheque, and those doors reflect that stuff back. If you don't want it, very simple. Angle of incidence is angle of reflection. Aim that light just a little bit more. And that's the nice thing about speed lights. I only tilted that, and you can get it out a little bit more. It will always be a little bit there because I'm aiming it at that side. But now, look at the eye. You see now it's a little bit gone. So. 
this is also one of the reasons, by the way, why I never include a lot of diagrams in my books. Because literally what you saw me doing was nothing. I just, boop, that's it, and the glare is gone. So let me do that again. Aim it back, just one click. Let's take a nice shot. Now you see the glare. Swivel the head, just very, very slightly, not even one click. And there you go, now the glare is gone for the most part. So controlling your light becomes very, very easy and very, well, handy. But now we're shooting something from the front, so we're just using that blue light to actually enhance our model. What if we want our model to be a little bit more like boom, out there? So now we're going into the realm where we don't use perfect exposure, but we're going to use exposure that's a little bit over the top. So we're going to go to channel A, we're going to add a full extra stop, so three clicks. And that means that my model will get a lot more light on our face, that will blow out just a little bit. And the blue will actually still fill in. And now we have something that goes a little bit more towards feeling in a picture, maybe what you would retouch. Again, the exposure now is totally off because the model is overexposed. But you have to ask yourself, does it look right? If it looks right, it is right, right? That's why you use a light meter. If you love this look and you go like, hey, I love this look, I know it's not correct, use your light meter and then go one stop over. If you don't like the look, and that's the cool thing about the light meter, don't worry. Go three clicks down again. And there we go. And now you have the perfect exposure again. So you can switch very, very easily between those two. Now, of course, we want to make sure that the model has light in her eyes. And I don't like this one, so I'm going to go a little bit higher. Okay, look a little bit up. Perfect, Nadine. Love it. Okay, look a little bit more on my side. Perfect. A little bit more, 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 more. Stop. Nice. Awesome. Now I'm using a black mist filter, so I am a little bit off. I'm telling you guys 5.6. I added a little bit and I'm shooting on 5. The black mist filter takes away a little bit of light, so it should be over. But again, I'm mixing those light sources. I'm using my light meter as a base, and after that I'm gonna switch over. So I'm using ISO 100 instead of 2, and I'm ended up at F5 instead of 5.6 ISO 200, which would be correct. So let me show you guys if I go to ISO 200, just to make sure, because I don't know if I explained that correctly, and I would go to 5.6. That would be way over. Now go for ISO 100. So I, I did actually meter on ISO 100. I just wanted to make that sure. There we go. Perfect. There we go. So ISO 100. Slight difference. Okay, let's say that we really like this, but we want something a little bit more moody in there. We want something that ooms a little bit. Now we're using blue, and let's add another strobe, but that strobe wants a little bit of lens flare in there. So at this moment I'm using actually a red on this one with a grid again. So let me take this one down. And anyway, can you give me a blue gel please? And let's also Where take... You already have a blue gel. No, another blue gel. Hmm. Slightly less blue. Slightly less blue, oh my. I don't know if that will work. What an excitement. I don't know if I can stand all the pressure. Okay. Now this one can be a little bit less intense because I'm using this as lens flare. So I'm going to place this next to my model. I'm going to aim it <laughs> literally directly into my camera. Let's turn it on first. It seems to work a lot better then. Cool. So you're using two domes. I'm using new two domes and no grids. So two domes, no grid, and let me see what happens. Now this is, of course, number C. And for lens flares, let's turn it up all the way. Ooh, exciting. Okay, let's see what we can do. Nice. So now we also have light on that left side, and this creates a little bit more a mood of that um, the future, you know, Th those Taiwanese or Japanese movies or Chinese movies, Korean movies, you know, all that 
Asian movie style. A little bit like that futuristic in a space station. It's always a little bit blue. The face is a little bit blue. It's never really white. We call that color toning. So that's actually what we're doing now. And thanks to the dome, I'm aiming straight at my camera. So I'm getting that lens flare. But I'm also, thanks to the dome, lighting my model. And this is interesting because as you can see now, the dome is way in front of my model. So let me just give you some sense of direction. The dome is here. The model is all the way there. And still I'm getting light on my model. And that's thanks to the dome. I don't know what's happening now. I think the dome doesn't agree. So let me just take the dome off. And let's just see what happens. As I mentioned before, it's really easy to take it off. I hope it's also easy to put it back on again in a moment. Up until now, the whole system still fits in my pocket. And just see what the dome does. Oh, the dome does a lot. I don't know why it doesn't fire now, but hey, that's weird. Is it all cranked? No. Nope. Let me see. Should work. Wait for the recycling. Ah, there we go. So now without the dome, you can see that we get a totally different light quality. This is more mysterious, a little bit more out there instead of the dome, which made it a little bit softer. This can be very interesting if we shoot it from a low angle, give our model something really interesting. You see the lens flares coming in. Let's take off the sun hood. Oh, I love this. Nice. Okay, but let's put the let's put the dome back on again. I hope you guys like this, but I really like what I'm getting. It's the first time I'm using this backdrop, it's the first time I'm using this system, and I think my nervousness has gone away. Because it, this is so easy, guys. I can't tell you how easy this is. And this is the reason why I wanted to do this without testing it beforehand. Because I want to make sure that it's really as easy as everybody tells me. Yeah, I'm putting the dome back up because I never thought about it, but I do like it a lot more with the dome. There we go. Okay, dome is back on. Let's see what happens now. I really like this. Nice. Look at the difference. That dome, and that, that's the thing that I meant with omnidirectional light. That dome really works like a charm. Let's try how far we can push this system. Because now I'm getting the fun of it. Let's just go all the way to the front. Let's aim it a little bit lower, so it's far away from our model at the moment. Aimed at my camera. If it still hits the model, that's awesome. If it doesn't, it's totally expectable. <laughs> it still hits the model, that's awesome. Look at this. This is not played, this is really enthusiastic. The thing is, why I'm so enthusiastic is this means that we can probably get great portraits with this system without using softboxes. Let me try, because now I'm getting a little bit more into the whole vibe of smaller light sources. Let me turn this one off now. Uh, no, let's take that one off, on. Let's turn this one off. Cool. In essence, I'm letting you guys watch while I'm testing gear. How do you like that? Okay, let's see what we can do with this one. So let's aim this straight at our model. And uh, let's make a little bit like an, uh, something that is bound to go absolutely wrong with small strokes normally. Let's do a butterfly lighting. And this is not my favorite thing to do with small strokes. Because it's often really nasty. So we're using one dome and the flash bender. Yeah, one dome, no, not the flash bender, only the dome. Yeah, so something that I would normally not easily do. No. Okay, let's take out the color gel, of course. Okay, uh, where did I leave the red one? Here. Okay, let's put the blue one there. Take it off. There we go. Okay. Now let's put the dome in. This is an MG80. It's also Nissin. Uh, let me meter the light very quickly. Can we get the flash bender out of the frame, please? I don't know. Is it in the frame? Yeah. Okay, I will move it. Uh, 
Is this out of the frame? Yes, Am I out of the frame? Yes. Okay, I'm going home. <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do with this one. Okay, this is channel. Oh, and you didn't uh, give me uh, a channel. Uh, it doesn't matter. I will just figure it out. I think it's B. Yes, it's B. Oh, by the way, if you have Netflix, Men versus B, absolutely awesome. I can't say it enough. ISO 200, 4.04, so let's go to ISO 100, 2.8. Okay, let's turn that up. I want to go to F4. 4.9. Let's go down. Almost. There we go. Should be around four. Okay. Hmm. That's not smart. We do have 10 meter cables, but we do have to make sure that they're not stuck on a stand. Okay. No modification, only the dome. <laughs> I'm very curious to see what happens. Okay, let's give it a little bit more power. Oh, sorry, I'm still at, uh, I have to go to F4, of course. My fault. Oh, nice. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. It almost looks a little bit like what you expect from a ring flash. You still have those shadows behind her, but it's very, very soft. Let me just see what happens when we move it really close and start to use direction in light. Can you step a, a few steps forward? Okay, perfect. Let's aim this all the way down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit too much, I think, Nadine, sorry. Okay, let's do it like this. Okay, I'm not gonna meter this. I'm sorry, guys, but I don't wanna take off the remote control constantly. I'm just gonna figure it out. And this, by the way, is the reason why you shoot meter. As you can see here, I'm just messing this up. There we go, that's better. Okay, very, very dark, because of course the light is now coming from the top. So if you do something like this, make your model just look up. Very nice. There we go, look at this, wow. I love it. Okay, and a week. Do we have something like, um, uh, where, where you can spray water? I don't know. Can you grab that really fast? A planter spout, indeed. A planter spout. That's it. That's what we call a planter spout. I'm not sure. We do have a planter spout. <laughs> a plant uh, spout. Yeah. Is that good English? A plant spout? A plant spit. A plant split? I don't know. Okay, so I do like the effect. So let's also add in a little bit of oomph. Oops. Make sure that I don't lose my audio. There we go. Let's add a little bit of oomph again. So let's aim this one up, all the way up. I think we still have a blue gel in here. No. Yes, in this one we do. Oh, light blue. Yep. Uh, light blue. And let's do that a little bit from the back, so that we hit our backdrop a little bit. Let's see if that's C. That should be C. Yep, on full power. Okay, let me try something. I think this is a little bit too much. So let's go for C, let's go all the way down. Perfect. Okay, now let's aim that at our backdrop a little bit more. Don't try this with your camera in your hands. I'm just gonna feather it a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's try that again. Nice. Okay, 
Let's turn it down even more. I only want a little bit of mood in there, nothing more. That's nice. Okay, let's aim that from here. As you can see, I'm looking at what I want. I don't know it yet. And yeah, let's turn it up just a little bit. It's the nice thing about remote controls like the Air 10S from Nissin. There we go, that's only the one. Okay, let's turn on our main channel again. There we go, I really love this. Okay, uh, Brian, can you use the planter spout? And the only thing you have to do is stand next to the model, aim it up, and just spray. And when I say yes, one, two, three, go. No, a lot more. Yeah, do it. Uh, it doesn't really work. Can I have it, uh, Brian? Sure. For a second? Yes, I'm right. Uh, the, the idea is, but I think it's way too... Brian, try it like this, if you want. But I think it's too navelig. Oh, can you, can you turn it? Ah, okay. That works, maybe. Okay, try it. One, two. Yeah, we get a little bit in. Chin down a little bit. Okay, eyes straight ahead. Okay, Brian, try it. It's not the effect that I want. But in the end, you know, you can try this at home and try it with a little bit more water. As you can see here, when the eyes go too dark, I don't really like it anymore. So let's set this up differently. Let's take the blue gel out. And let's put a grid in. And let's see what we can do from a slight distance. So what I now want to do is I want to really make attention to my model. I don't want her to, to be part of the backdrop. I want her to really jump out. So let's put the grid in. Oh, and by the way, you can also put two grids on top of each other. Want to see? Two, two, <laughs> two on top. Okay. Let me put the dome in. Okay. And now the only thing I have to do is aim it straight at my model. So can you stand in the back or in the middle? Uh, there a little bit. Perfect. Let's aim this up. Okay, that one is still on. Let me give that a little bit of backlighting on the wall. There we go. And let's see what happens now. I didn't meet her yet, so I still have to adjust the lighting. Did it fire? No. Yes, it did, but it's too less power. So let's turn that one first up to full blast, just to test it out. And let's go for C a little bit lower. Okay. There we go, that's better. Okay, let's turn B down. And let's open up to 2.8 to get a little bit of shadow, uh, a little bit less depth of field. Oh, nice. What fell? Ooh. My models are falling apart. Okay, did you have it? Nice. Okay, now this one, in all honesty, is for me a little bit too standard. So we don't want this, right? So we're gonna turn it around again. But I'm also gonna add the second, the second uh, grid. So I'm going to aim this one slightly from above to our model. No second uh, grid. I'm going to do two grids instead of one. I'm still using the dome. And maybe that's also... There we go. Oh, it fits perfectly. This makes me really happy. <laughs> okay, let's aim this up just slightly. Okay, you can extend a little bit that way. Perfect. We're getting somewhere now. 
perfect. Let me aim it slightly better. Okay, let's turn channel B almost on full power. There we go. Okay, so now that you see that I'm using two grids, we do get a little bit more focus light. The blue on the back is, for me, still a little bit out of reach. So I'm going to pull that a little bit closer. And I'm going to put a lot more power on that, but I'm going to remove the dome. And because I'm not using a grid, I'm just going to take it all, uh, sorry, not a gel, so I'm taking it all off. Looks great. And now we should have some really nice focus light. Is it straight at you or, or do it need up? Straight at, me. straight at you? Awesome. Okay, let's turn this one down to half power and let's just see what we need. And this will probably be ISO 400 now. Of course we should use a light meter, but I don't want to use too much time. Okay, perfect. Let's go down a little bit on power. And as you can hear, we have our visitor, Chewy, who is really enthusiastic today. Yes, Chewy! Okay, we're almost there. That's nice. Okay, let's turn on C. C a little bit more. As you can see, I'm just balancing those lights together. There we go. So I'm getting a really nice focus on my model, really make her stand out. And you're getting that nice flare from the sides, which just gives it a little bit extra. This gives me a little bit more of a moody, walk, a moody uh, look. So let's take one of the grids off again. And in my pocket, eyes up just a little bit. Nice. And as you can see here, when I take that second grid off, look at the difference. Now, almost my whole model is lit. Let me just aim it up just a little bit again. And under a slight angle to make the backdrop work a little bit more. There we go. Let's put that second grid in again. Oh. <laughs> Love it. Sorry. And there we go. Ooh, this is nice. Okay, let me try a slightly lower angle. Nice. Awesome. Okay, for the next setup, we're going to use our other backdrop and we're going to use the strip light again and some red gels to really enhance that backdrop. So let me go back to the computer and let me explain some stuff. So in a week, if you can change. Oh. Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, we'll take that out later. Okay, let me switch over to my camera. Okay, so what just happened? Um, let me see if there are any questions. Okay, no questions. Okay, what just happened? So we get a new system in and sometimes I want to test it out before. And the reason is very simple. I don't want to do a live stream with a new product and go like, yeah, and then make a mistake. Because we are the distrib distributor for Rogue Expo Imaging, I did want to do it that way for the very simple reason. When I saw the system, this is the kind of system where you look at the system and you already know what's going to happen. And as you can see here, it actually worked exactly the same way that I thought. And I think that's very important when you buy into a system because there are so many systems out there that will give you something like this and you put it on and it just doesn't <laughs> look like this. It just looks like there's something in front of your strobe that takes away one stop, but it doesn't really make the light softer. This, and this was the thing that I was most curious about, because we're using connectors, of course, and adapters. When I looked at it, I was going like, yeah, it should do this, but it's far away from the strobe head. So I was a little bit curious to see if it really works, but it does. So I'm over the moon with this. It's really, really great. And I hope you guys, let me know in the chat what you guys think of the magnetic system. I think it's absolutely just awesome. It's been a long time since I've been so enthusiastic about a product, to be honest. And we can smiling as he goes like, yep. And especially what I like is the way that it really clicks together. It's not like click and it falls down. It's like really sturdy. Okay, so the gels. Um, we are going to use some colors in a moment. 
And of course we have a blue backdrop. So what I want to do is I want to actually create a little bit of an atmosphere with the strip light as our main light source. And then I want to use one blue actually to light the backdrop into the distance. And then what I want to do is I'm use that strip light to get our model in. And by direction of light, I really want to pull that model towards the set. So Anawik is setting everything up with Nadine. Nadine is changing. So in between, I'm going to show you very quickly something about Patreon. Patreon is something that is very close to my heart. It's a great community and we have some really nice tips in there. And every month we do uh, portfolio reviews uh, for all the guys to see. So let me show you something from Patreon. I'm going to take a little drink and we will be back right after the break. Hey guys, and welcome to our studio in Amelot. My name is Frank Doroff, and today I want to talk to you guys about something that we get a lot of questions about. Hey Frank, and let me just break that off because that doesn't look right, right? Let me just change that very quickly for you guys. I'm so sorry. Uh, let me just see where we can change that. Um, this is one of the things that I don't like about being live. Oh, okay, let me see. Adjust by percentage. Okay, let's go to 100% and 100% there. Okay, there we go. Patreon. How do you like this image? Hey Frank, what can I improve in this image? And of course, I love to help you guys out. But on... I'm sorry guys, I don't know what's going on here. It should start from the beginning. Let me see why it doesn't do that. If it doesn't do, then we do something I, else. I mostly am limited to just saying, hey, I really like it, or continue like this, or change this. I, I can only do short images because, let's be honest, we get so many questions. So that's what actually got us thinking, and we started a Patreon. Now, what is a Patreon? Well, let me put it this way. Do you want an extensive photo critique every month? Do you want the bed phone where you can directly contact me with any questions you have? Do you want to be a member of a group that's closed off on Facebook that have the same interest as you guys? That isn't about putting people down, but it's actually about helping people progress in their photography and retouching. Well, that's our Patreon. Now, by joining our Patreon, every month you can deliver one or two images. We're not that strict about it. And I will do a whole video. In that video, I will show you how I would do the retouching what I would change about the shot, and I give you a whole lot of tips. That video is put online on a closed-off website, and it means that only the guys from Patreon can see that video and help you out. So I help you out, and the whole community helps you out. It's just an awesome way to learn. So, if you like what we do, of course, the first thing you can do is subscribe to our channels, leave comments, and smash that like button because we really like it and tell other people about it. But if you want to do a little bit more and help us out creating the awesome programs you enjoy, like Behind the Closed Doors, Digital Classroom, quite frankly, our upcoming podcast, Beyond Photography with the Doorhoffs, and a lot more, then please join our Patreon. I already know you're absolutely going to love it. So head on over to the link below and start joining our awesome group on Patreon and get a lot of benefits. Thank you so very much for supporting our work. See you online. The Light of the Old Masters. Isn't that a great title? But what is it? Well, in the old days, we all know those pictures, right? Harcourt, George Harrell, film noir. It's that awesome look where you have total light control. Well, this video is all about total light control and mimicking the look of those old masters. But we're going to do way more because we are not in the old times anymore, of course. We are in modern times. So we're going to talk about using flex in a modern studio. Of course, combining continuous lighting with strobes for a film noir look. How to create those really nice harsh shadows on your model, for example, from blinds. And, of course, how to get mood in your pictures. I'm going to share a lot of different tips to get a nice glow in your images without breaking the bank. We're going to talk about speciality lenses, like the Lens Baby system. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff that really adds that 
magic of the old masters to your images. The video is available now and I'm 100% sure you're gonna love it. It's very technical, but I'm very sure that even if you're a beginner, you get a lot of information out of it. But this is the video about Total Light Control, Glamour, the Light of the Old Masters. Available now. Okay, and by the way, I want to do something really quick in between because Nadine is still um, still uh, changing clothes. I do want to play a little bit. I'm just kidding. I don't want to play guitar for you guys. But I do want to show you something else. Now, over the years, I've written some books, including Mastering the Model Shoot, of course. And in the Netherlands, we actually uh, wrote a book called The Magic of the Speed Light, of the Small Strobe. That book was really well uh, reviewed. And we actually got a question, I think, uh, a year or so ago to... Um, to make an uh, adjusted version, so an, an updated version. And I don't really believe in updated versions. So what I did is I rewrote the whole book. I started from zero and I built it all the way up again to the end. So we now have two books in Dutch about the speed lights that are, if you buy one and you buy the second one, there is some overlap, but it's still a totally different book. It's totally rewritten. Every chapter, there's nothing copied from the other one. And that's actually what pissed off a few of the English uh, followers of us. And they said, why do you have two books in Dutch about the speed light and not one in English? So especially for those guys, we don't want to piss you guys off. You know it, we love you guys. We actually, or I didn't do it, and we actually did it. He translated the whole book together with some friends from the States. And then when I got the book back, I read the whole book again and I changed everything for the very simple reason. It's again updated to now and I literally, I thought, you know, I have the chance to update it now. Why not do it straight away? So now we have three books about the speed light that are totally different. We have the first Dutch, the second Dutch, and then we have the English translation that's based on the Dutch version. So I want to show you very quickly how that book looks and you can order it now online via Amazon. Now, we do still have to check if Amazon really sells the book because we ev everything is available. The, the download is available on Amazon. The paperback somehow, because it started at page five, I don't know, they didn't want to put it on Amazon. So we did do a revision where we started page one. That one has uploaded. So today or tomorrow, it should appear on Amazon. If it doesn't, just drop us an email because from our side, we can see the Dutch version and it's there, or the Dutch version, the Dutch version of Amazon. And there, it's there. But we heard from some people from the States that it wasn't. We dove into it and then we found out that we started at page five. We changed that about two, year, two weeks ago. So it should be okay by now. So you can get the book online, Speedlight Magic. Does it look like this setup? No. <laughs> it's more like the basics and then a lot of lighting setups, different techniques, different gear that I use. It's, it's awesome. It's, it's a really great book. Okay, let me just go on to the next set. And let me just change something for an adorable scene that you guys probably never will see again. A model with a dog. Isn't that just, you, you can look at this for hours, right? Just leave it on for hours. Doesn't really matter, what else can we do? Right? <laughs> okay, okay, we're gonna go in picture in picture and we're gonna switch over again. Okay, and a week. If you could take over here again, I would really appreciate that. Brian behind the camera. So we have Brian here. And let's just give it a little bit more light on the set. The cameras will love this. Okay, so first things first, let me see where I get everything because I put it in my pocket and now I don't know where it is. Uh, and we do you have the dome there? Do you have the dome? Thank you. Let me see, we have two grids here. We don't need that. Let's take that one off. There we go. Let's put the grid in here again. Yep. 
There we go. Okay, let's grab our strip light. Nadine, wow, I love it. But you need to come a little bit more forward, like here. Really like it. Okay, so what did we create here? Um, I think one of the things that is most important in photography is storytelling. But most of all, it's not really storytelling, it's more engaging the viewer into a world that's different than their own. That sounds really weird, but let me explain. We can do a lot with lighting. We can make something more interesting by using hard lighting, or make something more soft by using soft lighting and big soft boxes. But we can also create tension in a shot between the backdrop and our model. Now, by creating tension in the backdrop, it's also important to have a backdrop. Now, of course, you can use everything. You can use seamless paper if you want. But as you can see in the previous shots, it's way more interesting to create something that's a little bit more real or a little bit more fake, in this case, that looks real. So in this case, we have a, a click prop backdrops backdrop. Yes, and it's a very long one. This is called a panoramic. Now, you might be confused because the backdrop actually doesn't stop where you think it stops. It works at least another meter through. So we have two backdrops on top of each other. And that's because the panoramic for me is a little bit too long, but the normal is just a little bit too short for what I wanted to do here. So we choose, okay, we're gonna lose half of the panoramic, but hey, or one meter, so that's okay. Okay, Nadine is standing here. Let me just put one light on Nadine. And I don't want a lot on the backdrop. I only want Nadine. And then I'm gonna explain to you guys what we actually did, because this is a pretty cool setup, if I say so myself. Let's see how high this stand can go. Not very high. No, it doesn't been to Amsterdam. Let's just aim that up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, let me just take one shot. And I'm gonna be standing here. I want full body shots. In this case, let me turn off B and C. Great. Let me turn on A. Let me just start on 1 16th. Okay, that's already way too much. Oh yeah, I'm on ISO 400 f2.8 so let's change that first back to iso 200 probably f4 now you can see why a light meter is so much better okay that's nice okay so now we have our model in our set but as you can see it's a set it looks nice but it's not really something where you go like wow frank i wish i would have known this before so let me just go a little bit further Let's just include a little bit more of the set, and then you can start to see our problem. Our problem is I don't see enough of the set. So how do we do this? And this is where those domes come in so incredible, I think. So we have a blue backdrop. So let's start by feathering blue from that side. And just by feathering, I literally mean I'm using the dome, so I'm making my light omnidirectional. I'm gonna feather the backdrop, I'm gonna feather my model. And we're just gonna see how far it goes. So let me check if there's a blue gel on here. Yep, and let me just turn this one towards my light source. This is channel C, and I'm gonna place it literally like a sandwich. So I'm gonna use the sides of that light. So let's turn on channel C. Now, if you have a system that don't allow you to turn on strobes and change the output of the strobes per strobe, Make sure you check the Nissin system out. And there are more brands, of course, that have this, but I'm using the Nissin because it's so incredibly easy. From the remote, I can turn on strobes, I can turn them off, and can turn them harder, softer. I can even switch one to ETTL and the other one to manual. I can manually zoom my strobes. It's just an amazing system. And it's all wireless by radio. Oh, look at this. That little bit of extra. Do you see that? Oh, I love it. Okay, let's turn it on even higher, let's see. Let's do full power, why not? Batteries are cheap when you recharge them. Oh, that's nice. Love it. But still, you need a little bit extra light in the front, right? This is where we call a light in light to the rescue. Now, what is light in light? You always have to remember that I'm now aiming one light source on my model, and that's awesome. But you also want to open up those shadows. And this is again where those domes come in really, really nice. You can use 
of course, straight strokes on your model, but then you also have reflections. By the domes, because they're, again, omnidirectional, I can probably get away by doing the same thing we did before, just lowering. Oh, I hate these stands. And just aiming it up. And just go down. There we go. Let me see what color is in here. Uh, Anui, can I get a blue from you? Another blue. My dog is trying to protect me from my son. Or he says, don't use blue, use red. No, Chewy, I'm using blue. Yeah, he thinks it's a cookie. Probably, you're right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me try this again. Okay, so now I'm also going to turn on channel B. And channel B I'm going to do, let's be adventurous. Let's also go f uh, one fourth. Oh, love this. Let's go even higher. Let's go, why not? Let's go full blast. Nice. And now as you can see, I'm getting just enough detail in. It's not all blue, it's not over the top blue, just a little bit. So let's move this a little bit closer to our model and the backdrop. So I'm going to aim this here. We call this from now on the moving accent light. Oh, this is so cool. This gives you so many more options than you had before. Look at the direction of light and still that dome, that omnidirectional light. Oof. This is nice, they did their homework really well. And I don't want to look cocky, right, like they did their homework really well, but designing a photography piece of gear is so much more than just making sure that something emits lights or modifies lights. It's getting something in the hand of the photographers that work for their creativity. And we have so many products here that work, and they do what they're supposed to do, but you can't use them in a super creative way. And with the flash bender, we already get that, with that bending of light. And now with the domes, it's, like I said, it's just, <laughs> this is really cool. Okay, let me take the grid off, because I'm now using aimed light. So let's take that grid off. Man, that's tight. Okay, there we go. So now it will be a little bit less subtle. Nice. Now we're really filling up that whole scene, do you see? So the back is nice. I like the, the other side now, but let me just change this a little bit to more directional. Let's aim it down. Let's aim this down a little bit and feather it towards the camera. So I'm going to place it here, aim it all the way down, just to open up those shadows and maybe aim it a little bit behind our model to also open up the back. Let's see what that dome can do. Oh, too much for me. And this is without. I think that one, that C now should be, or sorry, that's B, should be all the way down. This is why we label our strobes. Because you could say the B from blue, but they're both blue. Okay, now as you can see, now I'm getting that shadow behind my model, which I absolutely don't want. So we're going to change that light. So I think up is the best way. Make it diffuse. Aim it a little bit better towards there. And again, I'm just experimenting, guys. There's no hidden teachings behind this. Just see me work and see how I solve the things. I think that's also nice for a digital classroom once. This is really, really cool. Okay, the back. Now, there's one thing that annoys me a little bit. Now, this set is built up by using Pro Fabric in the back and by using Final on that side. Now, Final is a really cool product. It really makes colors jump out and it's really good for high resolution prints. However, the Pro Fabric that we have on the other side is without a doubt my favorite material. And that's because I can also shoot through it. So let me try that now. So first we're gonna aim this one slightly differently. Slightly lower. I wanna have a little bit more direction in the light. Let's take this one. 
and place it all the way behind the backdrop. Let's see what we can do with this. There we go. I'm not going to say this looks awesome or whatever, I'm just going to try it. You never know. Let's go for B. Let's go that, uh, I'm sure that needs full power now. Nice. I think it's actually too much on the back. It does look nice, I, I really like it, but let's just pull down blue for, let's go down two stops. This is way better. Now on the bottom I still need a little bit more openness for our model. And this is something that is very, very easy to do. As you can see now, the strip light is aimed straight at our model. And it lights almost perfectly. The only thing I need to do is move it a little bit further away. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to take this one. I'm going to aim it here. Let me see if I can still aim it straight at our model. Yes. We need a little bit more power. Of course, because we moved the light. Let's try this. And now we should have a little bit more. Yes, there we go. So now the set is a little bit more lit. Oh, I really like this. Now we're getting somewhere. Let me go for a slightly lower perspective. Let me see how low we can go. I can go pretty low, not too low. Now the top I have to Photoshop, but that's okay. Let's see if we can do something a little bit more that I don't. Yeah, I like this. Nice. And of course you can still do portraits. It looks absolutely stunning like this. Or use your negative space the other way around. Or go for the borders. Uh, let's go full body again. And I'm also using floor panels from ClickPro Backdrops. In this case we're using, what's the name, Anyway, Old Floor? Uh, stain. Stained Floor. Uh, okay. Wood stained something like that. So if you look online, go for wood stained something like that, or just look for something like that and you will find it. Oh, I love this. Very, very cool. But now let's, let's up the ante a little bit. Whoa, do you need me? Oh, let's up the ante a little bit. And then we can get the red gel. What would happen if we combine the blue backdrop with the red gel? This is gonna be funky. I love funky. Do you love funky? Yeah. Okay, let's switch over. Nice in between storytelling. The gels are made of Lee material and they can't tear. I'm not gonna try it, but they are very, very sturdy. Okay, let's see what happens if we put red gel on a blue backdrop. I have no idea. But hey, we are in experimental mode today. So why not? That's bizarre. Wow. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Let's make a floodlight. Don't give me new gear. I'm getting way too excited. Okay, let me try a floodlight. I, I'm now behind the Pro Fabric in case you think I'm gone home. No, I'm still here. Let me see if I can raise this high enough. I don't think so. That would be a shame. Okay, let me try. Maybe. Ooh, maybe just. Does it come over? Yes, right? Yes. Oh, cool. I'm on the top limit now. <laughs> okay, let me aim this down. Okay, let's just hope that it stands there. I can't reach it anymore, so it should be fine now. And this is the cool thing, with the remote control, with the remote control, I can still use the remote control. Whatever. Okay, let me try something. Let me sit down. We have that floodlight. Let's see what it does. Nice, it will just give you that nice extra light on the back. That's really cool. Okay, let's see if we can raise C. Let's lower C first. 
and then uh, let's turn off C and let's only try B, also turn off A. Okay, I'm gonna tell you in a minute what I'm doing. Nice, but not nice. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm turning off all the strobes to see what I'm actually doing. And, oh <laughs> and what I want is a floodlight over my model. And as you can see here, I'm actually aiming against the backdrop. So I don't want that, so I have to change my lighting. So I have to go here and just aim it slightly more forward. It's very hard for me to see what I'm doing. So guys, please bear with me if it goes wrong. Don't be angry. It's all my fault, not the gear. Okay, let me see what happens now. This will be better. So again, this is only one strobe. I'm sitting on a very low position so I can see where my strobe is and what it does. This is what I want. Yes, this is awesome. Okay, let's turn it to ISO 400. And in essence, what I should do now, and I think it's better to take that camera again, Annemiek, because I'm sitting down. Just pick that camera up, put it there, and just focus on me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a meter re uh, sorry, not a meter reading. I'm going to take a shot with all my strobes off. There we go. This is ISO 403.5. Okay, now as you can see, there's a little bit of light hitting our model. This is nothing to worry about. This is great. So this is okay. So now we're going to turn on, I think it's B. Yes, it's B. Let's turn that one on again and let's turn it on full power. So I'm going to build it up. Yes, that's the floodlight I want. But this is of course way too strong. So let's go uh, this down. Is a question, Frank. Can we move the diagram out of the iPad? The diagram out of the iPad? Uh, oh, one moment. You need the, how do you call it, the histogram. Okay, I don't know if that's possible. Let me see. Um. Uh, <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> this is stuff that I hate. Guess cable, if you're watching, if I say off, it should be off and not on. Let me see if I miss a setting. Uh, camera connection, photo review, external display. Show histogram on external display. Off. Sorry, my fault. No, escape as cable's fault. Okay. It's still there. Sorry, guys. Okay. We tried. Okay, so now that we've set that one up, now watch this. This is, th this is the lazy Frank. I'm going to just sit down. So I have that backdrop. Now I'm going to make my composition the way that I like it, probably like this. Zoom in a little bit more. Oh, <laughs> make sure that it fires. There we go, okay. It's a little bit too much still. Let's go down. I love this. Yes, this is awesome. Okay, now let's turn on channel A again. This is my main strobe. That was on 1.8, that's probably way too much, so let's go down now, because I raised my ISO. Okay, that's a little bit too less. Let's go up. Okay. As you can see now, this is too much. Go down. We're creating a little bit more tension in the shot by that floodlight. So I have to make sure that my strip light now, of course, doesn't overshoot the scene. And it is doing that now. Oh, sorry. Come on. Fire. All the images that come in now are without strobes. I'm so sorry. There we go. Okay, I think this is better. And now let's turn on that one again with the red. So let's turn that one on. On a high setting. Why not? Nice. And now as you can see, now we have that separation that I wanted. 
So now I have the whole set lit, I have that nice blue light coming from the back with a little bit of lens flare, thanks of course also to the black mist filter from KNF. We have that blue hitting over that, uh, um, sorry, that red hitting over that blue. I really like Nadine's outfit here, I like the poses. Let's just experiment a little bit with this, so let's just give some cool poses, there we go. Uh, let me just zoom out a little bit more, there we go. Nice. And as you can see, the strobes, the Nissin strobes, they're almost on full power, but they just keep shooting. It's <laughs> I love this system. Nice. Awesome. Great. Oh, now I'm missing the flood. There we go. Okay, can you change in one more outfit? Oh, yes. Let's go back to the computer. Nice. This is really cool. Doesn't show full resolution on the uh, monitor, but I guess it does here. Okay, let me switch over to my main camera. Just grab myself a drink. I hope you guys like it so far. Uh, let me just explain what I did with this set. So when I approach a set, how do I do it? The first thing that's really important when you build a set is that you build something that fits together. Now that sounds really, really obvious, right? But it isn't. In most cases, when I see somebody building a set, unless it's of course Hollywood, there they know what they're doing. But also when I started out, the thing is I always try to cram the set way too full. And less is more, you know that saying, it also goes for sets. Now the backdrops, that's something that's really important for me. Now when you look at these shots, what you see is that we're using that backdrop not only as a backdrop, we're only, let me put it this way, if you only use it as a backdrop, it's too simple. You just put light on it and that's it. When you're on a location, what you do with your backdrops is you always find a certain spot for your model. And that's already the difference between a backdrop in the studio. In the studio, you already have that backdrop, you put your model in front of it. On location, you walk around and you find the perfect backdrop for the clothing, for the lighting. But also when you find that perfect backdrop, you're starting to think about, okay, how should I light it? Should I use light from the side? Should I use the direction of light? Should I just blast the light straight on with our model in front? What? And this is the part where it becomes interesting when you work with something like click prop backdrops. Because they have so many prints, you can literally just find something that fits your mood. What I do in the studio is very simple. We have a few pro fabrics, about four, and we have final, about four or five of our own. Before a client comes in, we literally ask them for a mood board. So what do you like? We show them some images from backdrops that we have and let them choose. The moment the client comes in, we have all those backdrops up. So in our studio we have room for three on an electrical system, ten for paper, and we have place for two finals, one panoramic and one normal final. And of course we have all our studios in the wall that have special colors and tints. And still, every time I put up a backdrop, I'm always doing the same that you saw me doing today. Start with one light. If it looks great, fine. But if you run into problems, like I, I did, it was not really a problem, I wanted to try something. The first thing you do is turn everything off and start with the light that gives you the trouble. Now, I wanted that floodlight and I didn't see that floodlight right away. I was going like, what the hell's going on? That floodlight doesn't look right. You can keep shooting and at one point there was too much light on the backdrop. So what's the first thing you do? Turn off that background light. That wasn't the problem. It was my floodlight that was actually aimed a little bit too much towards the backdrop. By turning everything off and starting by that floodlight, I immediately saw what was going on and I could just change the direction, shoot again, and then you see that uh, line out of the model, so the accent on the model, and then you turn on your main lights, the back lights, and then you're done. I think this is very vital and also Saturday during the workshop we experienced something very, very similar to this. One of the students, they changed the lighting and somehow, uh, sorry, that was two weeks ago, somehow it just didn't work right. And there were three or four strobes, I don't remember exactly, the only thing that you could figure out at that time was when something is going wrong. Turn everything off, start with one light. If that's okay, turn it off. Second light, ah, there we go. 
direction was wrong, turn it on again, and now you can just build your set. So that's how we did this set. Now, the colors. When I started picking out this backdrop from ClickPro Backdrops, the only thing that I looked for was something that could emulate an old castle. And I just love this backdrop. Let, let's be honest, let's just switch over to it for now. It just looks like an old castle, right? Th those walls. But also you need something on the floor. Now in our case we're using floor parts, uh, also from ClickPro Backdrops, and you can get them in many different uh, prints. But you can also, of course, use anything you have in your studio, like the floor of your studio, you can buy vinyl. Personally, I think these look a lot better than vinyl that you buy in the do-it-yourself store, because that's actually meant for domestic use, so in-house. And of course, with photography, we want an old concrete wall or a floor, we want old wood. But if you can get something in vinyl, it will work also. The backdrops, however, are important because those give you those reflections. Do you want me to put the... Uh uh, what? Flash down behind the canvas. Oh yeah, that can go away because now we're going to do something a little bit more classical. Okay, so we're going to set up very quickly. I'm going to show you very quickly uh, something about, let's do creativity and styling, also with Medine. <laughs> Hey guys, Frank here. I'm the author of Mastering the Model Shoot and you guys love the book because we get rave reviews and well, it's a very complete book, right? And what is the best thing to do next to the book? You have to see the stuff, right? So you can visit workshops or you can get instructional videos and that's actually what we are doing at the moment. We already released Mastering the Model Shoot for video one, the light meter, everything about the light meter. After that, we released On Location with loads of tips on working on location. And that's one of the most challenging things because there's so much going on. And today, we are releasing video three, creativity. And this is one of the most asked questions. How do you get that creativity in your shots? How do you make sure that the images go from okay to wow? So in this video, we talk about everything, well, everything that's almost impossible because creativity is so incredibly big but in this video we're going to show you some really cool tips we talk about styling how about the photo shoot with jessica rabbit and that's not a joke how about smoke and gels how about working with a light blaster with different lenses lens flare breathing on the lens and there's so much more in this video so make sure you check out mastering the model shoot video 3 creativity Hey guys, my name is Frank Dorov and I'm the author of the book Mastering the Model Shoot. And you guys really like the book because we get a lot of emails with questions about topics in the book. And I thought, what is the best companion to a book? And that's video, right? Because then you can see what we're doing. So our first video was all about the light meter. The second video is all about a topic that's really difficult for a lot of photographers. Shooting on location. Because, let's be honest, there's so much going on. You have the location, you have the model, you have public. What gear do you bring? What stories do you want to tell? How do you shoot something? How do you... Well, there are so many questions. It's impossible to just tell you everything we're going to do in the video in a trailer. So, we made a video while traveling the UK and Scotland with two models, Lena and Nadine. And I'm going to show you how to shoot with, for example, the Ellen Boom Quadra. I'm going to show you how to shoot with small strokes, which modifiers to use what a grid does, how to coach your model, and way, way more. And we even included two full retouch sessions. So if you want to shoot on location and you want to go from OK to WOW, you want to master your model shoot, then watch this video, On Location, Mastering the Model Shoot, video two.
Oké okay guys, so Nadine is still in make-up. <laughs> yes, en hallo Helmond. Emmeloord hier. Um, are there any questions? So we have Facebook open, we have YouTube open, and I would love to have your impressions about the new Rogue Expo Imaging Magnetic Kit. What do you guys think? Because again, this is not played. I'm really testing this out for the first time. And I'm just over the moon. I just love the flexibility. I love how everything clicks together, but it's very easy to take off. I was a little bit afraid that with, with strobes, you know, if you have to pull too hard that you will damage something, but the click system, so just turn it, uh, sorry, turn it just, um, how do you call that when you take it off, not straight, but under an angle, take it off under an angle, just click it off. It works like a charm. Oh, and by the way, don't mention that this camera is a little bit too dark. I see that I don't have it on manual. We switched over cameras. And this one is not on manual yet. Okay, so any questions on YouTube or Facebook until we're waiting for Nadine? Because we have something else planned for you guys that will, I hope, blow your mind. Okay, uh, is that a new Nissan new flash? Uh, no, the Nissans are, I'm using the, what am I using? I'm using the MG10, that's the big one with the lithium ions. That one is amazing, literally. If you need something that has a lot of power, that just keeps going and keeps recycling and you don't have to charge it a lot, get the MG10. It's an expensive strobe, but with the lithium ion pack, it packs so much power. You literally have to force yourself to not shoot too fast because otherwise it will overheat. But the Nissin MG10 is amazing. I'm not sure if it's available in the Netherlands. If not, please contact us because it uh, is, is distributed by uh, Rogue Expo Imaging and they can ship it together with the flash bender stuff. Yeah, in essence, if you don't get it in the Netherlands, we can order it for you and they can just ship it with the flash bender stuff and we can sell it to you too. Um, the other ones I'm using is, I believe, the 700i and the MG80. So I got all four Nissan strobes here, including the smaller one. And this one is very, very cute. Um, and a week, where did you put it? Oh, here we have. This is the i60a. And don't let size fool you, because this is actually, it surprised me how powerful this is. Now, I'm, before this, I was using the Photix strobes, which are great, don't get me wrong. But I always had this problem with Photix with my Sony camera, and this was pure with Sony. I love to meter the light, and there was always this weird situation where you press it, it fires once, and then it fires the second one for metering the strobe. And I got a lot of problems with ETTL. And again, that's only Sony related. Probably they already solved it by now because I've, I've already not tried it for, I think, at least two years. The thing was that when Nissan sent me their Air 10S and the MG10, that was actually the first thing we got in, it was so e And this is what I mean with easy, right? It's how photographers work. We don't want to read whole manuals. We want to have something that's easy. And the Nissan strobes pairing is a little bit tricky, but the main advantage is during a workshop, I can just hand out Air 10S controllers, use it in open mode, and everybody can shoot Nikon, Canon, uh, Sony, it doesn't matter, it just works. And for me as a teacher, that's very important because I don't have to do everything over and over again if somebody switches systems. And the other thing that I like about Nissan is literally the whole way that the system operates. It doesn't really matter if you have an MG10 and you mix it with the 700. On the Air 10S, everything just works. And again, the remote controls is just gorgeous. You can set everything up. It's brightly lit, even outside. So the Nissan strobes, highly, highly recommended if you want speed lights. And of course, you can also buy your uh, main uh, system, like for example, for Sony. Of course, you have the Sony strobes. You have Canon RT series, I believe, still. And you have your Nikon speed lights. Um, overall, they're all great systems, but if you want something that's unique, uh, sorry, that's not unique and that you can use on all different systems, I highly recommend the Nissins. Now, if you don't want Nissin and you are in a country where you can't really get Nissin, but you can get remote controls, also check out Cactus. Uh, Cactus make remote controls and receivers, which you can use, for example, on your other strobes, also, for example, on your Hensel strobes. And those are also really, really well. They do something similar to what Nissin does with a system that literally just works over all cameras. And that's what I like about the Nissin. You don't have to worry when you buy a new camera, it just works. Okay, there Nadine is, yes. another question. Another question. Um, I'm not sure, it's from Roy. And he asked if, if you... Yes. <laughs> if, if you can use the floor as a background too. Anavik has a little bit of technical issues with <laughs> uh, add on, distortion. Add on, add on. Okay, so he asks if I can also use the floor parts as... Backdrop? 
and the other way around. I have to check that with Charlie, but when I look at the material, the floor parts look very, very sturdy, but they're a little bit thinner than the final that's on the wall. So I have to check this, but my mind would say the vinyl is so sturdy and so strong that you can probably use vinyl also on the floor. And I know for 100% sure, by the way, I don't have to ask Charlie. Charlie is the owner of Click Pro Backdrops. The reason I know this for sure, think about this. We have double doubles, and that's not a hamburger. The double double, and Scott, if you're watching, I'm still sick from that crazy animal animal style at, what was it? <laughs> Five Guys. No, in Vegas, where we went, the animal, animal style. They only have one burger on the menu, and then you ask for the animal, animal, uh, and you get something like a heart attack in a box. It was the <laughs> cafeteria on the no, highway. No, 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 it was, yeah, over the highway. It, guys, if you know it, just let me know. It's it, a chain. It's a chain. It's very big, but it's only in California, I believe. But it, it was terrible. But it, I love that chain. Every time we go there, we want to go but there. what Frank's trying to say, that the finals also come yeah. with the floor attached. Yes, yeah, so that's what I wanted to say. The double-double has the floor attached. So that means that you can use the final on the floor without any problem. Because otherwise, the double-doubles wouldn't make any sense. Now, in case you guys are going like, what the heck is a double-double? <laughs> I would go the same way. If you look at a normal backdrop, for example, they're 272 by 272 for the Pro Fabrics. If you have a double double, they're 272 by 475. And that means that they're actually twice as long. And it means that you go down and then you go even further and that's the floor part. So without any doubt, the finals you can also use as floor parts. But I will check it just to be sure that I don't use other material for the double doubles. And What's I'm sure you can hang the floor to the wall as well. And but otherwise you just so order big. a new one. They're not so big, so uh, I'm not sure. But if you do uh, like uh, uh, animals, uh, pets, pets? Or, or babies... I don't think that will be any problem at all to use it as a backdrop. No. 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 No, the backdrops will be no problem. Uh, it's uh, the floor parts as a backdrop. That's no problem at all. It also doesn't shine. Uh, another thing that I was thinking about, um, and now I forgot it because you said something. The double double? Not the double double. Ah, I don't remember. Oh, here. Uh, Daniel White. Uh, does the black mist filter enhance the edge of a strobe? Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> okay, so what is a black mist filter? Now, a few months ago, a friend of mine um, from America, he was testing out a filter from KNF Concept called Black Mist. And he said, Frank, this is really something for you. It enhances your lens flares. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've tested many filters in the past that promised exactly the same thing. And I ended up with shitty images. The only thing I got was soft focus. Everything was blurry and it looked awesome. But when I didn't have any backlighting, it just looked funky. It didn't work. So in the end, they were very stubborn and they sent me the filters and I was just going like, I want to try it, but hey, don't expect anything from me because I'm not really a filter guy. You know, everything you put in front of your lens degrades your image. And well, as a medium format shooter, I want the best image quality. That's also why I shoot the R from Sony. I want high resolution, best quality. And this is where the Black Mist really made the difference. Now, although it's a Chinese firm, it is an expensive filter and that says a lot. So normally when you buy something, from Chinese ma makes, you can get really good products or really bad products. This is on the high end, a really good product. So what does it do? If you look at the filter, and I don't have one here because it's on my camera, when you look at the filter, you see all little nano dots, but then you really have to look like this because if I hold it in front of the camera, you won't see it. Those black nano dots, I think do something to the image that really helps, and that is, all my black areas seem to be razor, razor sharp. So that means that when I have the filter on and I look at the eyes of the model, everything is razor sharp. There's nothing there where you go like, ooh, that's softer. Maybe a micro inch, whatever. But it's really nice. As soon as you start backlighting your lighting, only the highlights become really nice and diffuse. And this is something that really shook me because in my opinion, and I'm not a technician, everything should be blurry. And I don't know how they do it, but it's really nice that the sides are exactly the same as the center, but still you don't have any soft focus. It's only the highlights and it's really amazing. So here I have one of those filters. Let me see if you get it really in front of the camera that you can see it. Probably not. That's why it's called Nano. So it takes away about one third of light or two tenths of an f-stop. It, it isn't a lot. And you get it in this really nice pouch. It's not a pouch, it's plastic. 
Sorry guys, I'm a little bit... Not all come in the box, Frank. Not all come in the box? No. Okay. But the magnetic ah, ones uh, you use now, they come in a box. And this is the logo, if you find it in the stores, k &F. And I'm using the magnetic... <laughs> I'm using the magnetic system. So what is a magnetic system? I just have one ring on my camera and then I just click everything up. So it's also magnetic. I can try if I can fit the dome on my camera. It's not magnetic. The dome is magnetic. Yeah, but your camera isn't. I have a magnetic ring. It wouldn't make any sense anyway. It's another... Uh, yeah, it's another size. Diameter. I would have loved to use my rogue dome on my camera. Probably you won't get an image. That's true. Probably. Or shoot on 2.8 ISO 62000. Some blurry. Some blurry images. Let's do something creative. <laughs> let's do something normal. Okay, let's go back to the, uh, to the setup. Okay, so I'm going to switch over again for any week. And Brian will be behind the camera again. So before I stand, let's make sure that my audio is okay. Who Nadine, I love this. That's your new backdrop, the Pro Fabric, Shinch Reclaimed. Oh, what's in a name? Okay, oops, that doesn't sound right. Just see if we can get something a little bit nice. Okay, can you step two steps forward? Nice, love it. Okay, let's aim this down just a little bit. There we go. Okay, I really like this. Okay, I'm setting something up that's a little bit similar to Rembrandt lighting. It's not really Rembrandt lighting, it's Frank lighting, but hey. Um, let me just first check if I have everything off and on. So let's go first to channel A. Yeah, but I can turn everything off here. Okay. Okay, channel A is on. 164th. I'm gonna stand here for this shot. I didn't meter anything yet, and that's dumb. Because I'm still on ISO 400. Okay, let's go for ISO 100. This is the best commercial for a light meter, because you can see that it... <laughs> well, in this case, it did work. Oh my god. That's always, you know, I hate this when it happens. I always tell people you need a light meter because it will never be right at once. And then I shoot it and it's right at once. That's so frustrating. Anyway, so this is the um, our Shinch Reclaimed backdrop from Pro Fabric. Now, one of the things that I love about Pro Fabric is the way that it renders. If you put some soft light on it, it will give you the most beautiful warm tints. So let's just do it now. Now, I'm not going to use any gels at the moment. I just want some really classic looking shot. So let's take out our blue gel. There we go. And let's just bring that here. I think we don't have any problems with Chewy tonight, Annemiek. He's very tired. <laughs> okay, this one, let's just, ooh, let's do something else. Let's take the dome off and let's use it as a grid, yes. And let's, let's see where I place those grids. Anami, can I get the grids from you? I don't know where they are. They are. In the broekzak? Oh, sorry. They're not in my broekzak. <laughs> and that's pen's pocket. Sometimes I don't know Yeah, I have the same thing. Especially when I drink too much. <laughs> okay. This is channel B. And what I want with channel B is just light the backdrop just a little bit. So it could be that Nadine needs to be a little bit more forward, but we'll see that in a moment. So let's turn on channel B. Let's B. Okay, let's turn it all the way down. Because subtlety is something that we want here. Subtle. Nice. Let's turn it up just a little bit. Love it. Okay, let's aim that a little bit more towards the backdrop behind my model. Let's ask the model to step one step forward. Perfect. This one will feather under an angle and maybe even get a little bit on our model. But we're going to use one other for the model in a moment.
Yes, this is nice. Okay, let's take the grid off and let's see if that is even better. So at the moment I'm literally at an open strobe with only the uh, main attachment, the, the ring. That will be a little bit too much. Yep. So let's turn that down. Yes. Okay, B down. And there we go. Nice, this is the one that I like. Cool. And now we only want to open up that side of our model. Now, for that side of the model, we're going to feather. And with feathering, we means that we don't aim the light straight at our model, but we're going to use it under an angle. So, for that one, I love the dome. So I'm going to place it next to our model. And I'm going to take off the grid and the gel. And I'm just going to use the dome. Oops. There we go. I have the feeling the dome isn't enough probably, so maybe we're going to add a little bit color later on. Let's just aim it correctly. There we go. Now I don't know the output yet. So I'm going to start on a probably low setting. Let's do 164th. Okay. Nice. As you can see here, now I'm opening up the shadows nicely from the side and creating a more classical looking portrait. <laughs> those domes are literally, I've said it many times today, guys, but those domes are amazing. What a quality of light for such a small strobe. And I love the lens flare in the side. Okay, let's do it a little bit more extreme. Let's see how far we can push this. I'm now almost oh, 40, 50 centimeters in front of our model. Let me just show you guys, that's about this. Yeah, because most guys, this is 10 centimeters, but in this case, it's really about 45, 50 centimeters. I'm aiming it slightly towards my camera. And I'm trying to capture it just out of the frame. Nice, and now I can turn it all the way up. I hope that's the right one. Yes, nice. And now you can get that really nice lens flaring. Maybe under a slight angle. Less lens flare. And then when I move this way, I'm capturing that lens flare straight on. There we go, love it. Chin up just a little bit. Awesome, thank you so very much Nadine. I think you're done. Oh. That was cool. Yeah, I love those shots. Nice. <laughs> okay, let's switch back to my camera. Okay, now as you can see, it's the first time I'm using the kit. We are two hours in the live stream and you, this was not a real, um, how do you call it, a digital classroom where we have a topic in which I explain like what can you do with lighting or what can you do with a model. This was purely a digital classroom to show you guys if you get something new, how fast can you adapt. And I think this is very, very vital and I think this is highly underestimated by a lot of photographers because in the studio everything is easy. When I teach a workshop, and we teach workshops a lot, everything is easy for the very simple reason. We have our students there, they pay to follow the workshop, so you have to perform. 
but overall, I know my Hensel strokes by heart. I know every setting. I know my modifier. So there's not really that scare factor anymore when you do workshops. However, when you work with speed lights, there's always this part where your batteries can die. Uh, you don't work with speed lights every single day. And of course, I know my flash benders, but how about the magnetic system? So I really wanted to do today as a live stream, like, okay, so Expo Imaging told me this is the best system on the market for magnetic systems. And I love those guys. And I know when they say it, it's right. And I wanted to give you guys an honest review of the gear. So that means starting a live stream, unpacking the gear, and just showing you how it works. And overall, I think they succeeded. Now, this is of course a little bit of a double-edged sword because we are the distributor for Expo Imaging in the Netherlands. And it would be really difficult if the system didn't live up to its expectations. But hey, I know the guy so long, I know for sure it did. So the system itself, I think the, the main thing is the grids and the holder. If you are more in the creative moods, those gels really pack a punch as you can saw if you yes, as you saw in the live stream. The dome makes the system, I think, finished. Uh, in the form of it makes it complete. Because if you only use stuff like this, you fall into the same trap as I did with the flash benders. The flash benders can create nice and soft light, but it's always a smaller light source. And that's not a big problem for my photography because I love working with strip lights and grids, so I'm already used to using smaller light sources. However, if you're an event photographer or, for example, a wedding photographer, you don't want hard light all the time. You want something that literally just lights everything up. And this is where the dome, the moment I saw it, I was going like, okay, this works because it makes the light omnidirectional. It doesn't just steer it forward, but because it's already on that adapter, there's already a grid in front. And of course your gel, you can take the grid off, of course, but there's already a little bit of a stack. And that's where I was very curious about, can it still wrap that light around? And it did. So for me, that was the biggest thing for today and it succeeded. So from now on, um, you can get it from our web shop. I will show you that very quickly. And you can also get more information about Rogue on our Dutch website and also our other products, of course. Are there any questions on Facebook or uh, YouTube? Let me know. We are about 10 seconds behind, so I will wait a little bit. Oh, Anna Week has a question. No, there are no questions on Facebook. But if anybody in the Netherlands wants to see it uh, up close and they're coming to the photo fair this weekend, let us know, we can bring one. Yeah, if you are at the photo fair this weekend, uh, 2 and 3 July. Yes, and there are some seats left yeah. on uh, Sunday where we're going to shoot with Big Flash. And the team is about bringing magic into your photos. Yeah, we are going to do something with magic. So I, I've collected all my tips, which I got over the years by just very simple experimenting with stuff. And I've never done anything with it, actually. I, I did write some of that part in the book, Mastering the Model Shoot. I do something with that during digital classrooms and during workshops, but I never really did a workshop where I literally in high tempo put all those tips behind each other. So using the black mist filter, using a tilt and shift lens, using lens flares, using breathing on the lens, backlighting material, a side lighting material, feathering light. And that's gonna be all during the photo fair in those workshops. So I'm teaching four workshops, two half days, uh, uh, sorry, two half days in one day, from 10 till one, I believe, and from two till five. Something like that. So please register on photofair.nl. And if you want, we will bring, uh, we will bring anything from, uh, we, let me rephrase this. Dutch is my native language, right? Not English, so sometimes I mess up. So what we're gonna bring is we're gonna bring the Rogue Expo Imaging gear, of course, with us for you guys to show. But if you wanna try it out on your own camera, let us know in advance because we will bring a demo kit. So you can walk around with the kit and just shoot it during the photo fair. And there's a lot of stuff there with cosplay, steampunk. And we just borrow you the kit, you walk around, you bring it back and you can just try it out yourself. We, we are 100% confident that you will buy it because, well, you saw it today, I'm, I'm convinced. I'm totally over the moon with it. Great. Anna Week, do you have anything to add? And by the way, on July 7th, mark this in your agenda. I want you guys all to find Anna Week's Facebook. <laughs> on July 7th, you're all gonna post there, Anna Week, congratulations with surviving Frank for more than 25 years. Because on July 7th, 
we are married for 25 years. Can you imagine that she held up with me for 25 years, a guy like me? No. So I think that's uh, really, really well. And but we but we're little, still not there, right? We it do have a little on. party on Sunday, uh, July 10th, for all our students and friends. So if yeah. you are willing to join our American barbecue, please let us know. And what we actually mean with American barbecue is we don't know how many people come, so bring your own food and drinks and you are welcome. But just let us know beforehand, because we only have limited uh, spaces for about 40 people or so. Yeah. That's about it. So... That was it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed our little, well, actually live review of the magnetic system from Rogue Expo Imaging. I am so excited about this gear. Uh, I can't wait to start uh, delivering the stores. What we will do in the Netherlands um, and Belgium too. If you're a dealer and you're watching this and you go like, holy, I want that stuff, contact us. Um, we will get it into your stores. And what we also do, and this is something that um, a lot of disturbers just don't, but we do it for IQ Wire, we do it for, of course, the backdrops, for Triflexion, and of course also for Rogue Expo Imaging, we are organizing in-store demos. So that means that if you are a store and you go like, okay, I really want to sell this stuff, but it's difficult and I don't know how it works. Well, you saw me doing this stuff, okay. We will do in-store demo. So that means that I will be there with Week or another ambassador. We are still looking for ambassadors. So if you're in the Netherlands and you're watching this and you go like, I could use that stuff, email me. We are looking for ambassadors to test this stuff out and to, of course, demo it. So we'll be doing in-store demos and we will starting probably end of the year, no, not end of the year, maybe we will. We will start photo walks. So that will be right the last weeks of summer. We will start organizing in the Netherlands photo walks where we will give you guys the Expo Imaging gear. And we just walk around with one or two models and you can just experiment in Amsterdam or in Rotterdam or whatever. You can experiment with our gear under guidance of an ambassador or me, because at first I will be doing probably the photo walks. Okay, I thank you so very much for watching guys. Make sure you stay safe and make sure you check our Dutch website for all the information about Rogue Expo Imaging. Very soon we will have, of course, a Rogue and L probably. We are working on that. Oh, and another thing, uh, go online. Uh, if you are on Facebook, find Click Prop Backdrops NL. That's our Dutch version of Click Prop Backdrops. And for Rogue, we did it slightly differently. Find Home of Rogue. Home of Rogue on Facebook is the international uh, Facebook group. It's run by us and a week and me, and the guys from Expo Imaging. So you are really talking to the manufacturers straight on there. They are monitoring it every single day. You can ask whatever you want. And we want to build this community way bigger and way stronger than any other brand does. We want to inspire you guys. We want to give you guys tips. We want to do everything for you guys to make you more creative. So home of Rogue, make sure that's our place where we start to share everything with speed lights and videos. There will be a lot of stuff coming because we're over the moon with the distributorships for Rogue Expo Imaging. It's a huge honor. And we thank Expo Imaging for the trust, of course. And I'm pretty sure you are in good hands with us because the products are awesome. We just have to sell it. So guys, go to the stores, demand Rogue Expo Imaging, and otherwise order it from us. Thank you so very much for watching, guys. I don't want to make it sound like a commercial, but I'm really over the moon. Thank you so very much, and see you again next time with our Digital Club.